Hello everyone. I hope all of you are having a great time and welcome to day 20th of February Read Code Challenge. The question that we have in today is removed covered intervals. Here in this question, we are given an array of intervals wherein each interval has two endpoints, the starting index and the ending index, what we call as L, I and R, I. What we need to do, we need to remove all the intervals that are covered by other intervals in this interval set. Also, we need to return the number of remaining intervals that are left after you have removed all the covered intervals up. Here in this example, they have provided us with an interval set as 1, 4, 2, 3, 6 and 2, 8. As you can see that 3, 6 is already covered by the virtue of 2, 8. As a result, we can simply remove 3, 6. The number of remaining intervals tend to be 1, 4 and 2, 8. And the count happens to be 2. This is what we need to return. Without further ado, let's quickly walk through the presentation that I have created for this and I'll be walking through the algo as well as these examples by the PPT. So let's get started. Remove covered intervals, lead code 1, 2, double 8. It's a medium level question on lead code and I totally feel the same. The approach that we are going to use to solve this question would be a greedy approach and we have already solved a couple of questions in the past with respect to the same approach. To name few, I can tell merge intervals was the one minimum arrows to burst balloon was another and there are few more which I'm attaching in the description below. If you want to try out similar questions on the same approach, do have a look at them as well. Now let's get to the point. Let's consider a slightly different example to what was specified in the question. I have added a new entry 1 comma 2 to the example that was specified in the question. The total number of elements that we have is 1, 4, 3, 6, 2, 8 and 1, 2. What I'm going to do, I'm, I'll again follow the greedy approach. I'll sort uh, these intervals first on the basis of x coordinate in the increasing order and then decreasingly on the basis of y coordinate whenever there is a clash between x coordinates. So once assuming that I have done it, uh, let's see the updated intervals array. You can see that the x coordinate matches over here. So in such case, we will give precedence to a higher y coordinate as a result of which 1 comma 4 comes at first then 1 comma 2. Let's proceed ahead. The next would be sorting on the basis of x coordinate. So we will get 2 comma 8 followed by 3 comma 6. Now if you carefully observe this updated array, you can simply assume that all the elements in this array would be in the increasing order of x coordinate. So we have increasing x here 1 in, or increasing or similar. It can't be decreasing. So 1 1 then we have 2 then we have 3. So we can simply eliminate x coordinate here and we don't need to do any manipulation over it. The area of interest would remain in the y coordinate. How? Let's walk through an example. So what I'm going to do, I'll create a variable and let me just change the color of pen for better understanding. I'll create a variable range of y coordinate and by default it will be initialized to minus 1. What do we see? We see the first element now which happens to be 1 comma 4. Now, is this range overpowering this 4 value? No, it's not. That means this element will be part of your answer. Since we have included this range, that is 4 to be part of our answer set, we will increment this variable uh, to the maximum of value that is set here versus this. So what is that? Minus 1 and 4, you get 4. So the range gets updated to 4. Now let's look at the next entry. The next entry happens to be 1 comma 2 and we will not look out for the x coordinate because we know it's already increasing in nature. We are only interested in looking out for the y coordinate range. So what is the value here? The value is 2 and the current max range that we have reached happens to be 4. That means we can simply eliminate this variable. This is not needed. It is already covered by some other entry in the past. Uh, and we can get this information from the range variable that we have created. And the value that is here is 4. Here it was 2. We can simply delete this element. Since we are deleting this element, we'll increment the counter variable to 1 because we are also counting how many intervals have we removed. Let's proceed ahead. Next, what do we see? We see that the next entry is 2 comma 8. We are not interested about x coordinate. We are only look out for the y coordinate. The y coordinate happens to be 8. Is, is the range overpowering 8? No, it's not. As a result of which, we have to include this as part of our answer. Along with this, we will update the range since we have included this as part of the answer to 8. So the range gets updated to 8. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is 3 comma 6. Again, we will not look out for the x coordinate. We are only interested in the y coordinate. What is the value at the y coordinate? It is 6. Uh, is uh, 8 overpowering 6? 
yes, this range that we have already reached is overpowering 6 because it's of lower value. As a result of which we can simply eliminate this and delete this element because this range has already been covered in the past. As a result of which the count variable gets updated to 2. That simply signifies in totality we have removed 2 intervals. So what is the length of the initial input data set that was given to us? How many intervals were there? There were in totality 4 intervals. How many have we removed? We have removed 2 intervals. What is the remaining count? The remaining count happens to be 2. And this is what we need to return. Pretty simple and straightforward, no rocket science involved in it. The crux of the problem lies in this sorting approach that we have followed because we are eliminating one coordinate and then operating on the other coordinate along the y-axis in this case. Without further ado, let's quickly walk through the uh, coding section where I'll conclude the approach. So as talked in the PPT, first thing that I'm going to do is to sort the intervals first on the basis of uh, x coordinate if it happens to be equal then I'll sort them in decreasing order on the basis of y coordinate otherwise we'll go for the increasing x coordinate. I have created an answer variable for sorting the answer and I have created a previous range variable for the y coordinate so this only signifies for the y coordinate. We can name it better. Then I start the operation over the intervals uh, using a for loop if my previous range happens to be greater than or equal to the current element of the at the y yth index that means the previous range is already cover, covering this interval as a result of which I increment my answer variable. So this answer variable is not actually storing the answer rather it's storing how many removal count. Let's rename it to removal count. How many intervals have we removed? Moving ahead I update my previous range to mat.max the current y coordinate and the previous one. We always look out for the maximum out of these two. In the end, I simply return intervals.length minus removal count. So let's submit this up. Accepted. It did it even faster, which is pretty good and fine in terms of time complexity. Uh, here it would be equal to order of n log n, where n signifies the number of elements that are part of the intervals data set. With respect to the space complexity, I think it would be constant space because we are not using anything extra here. This brings me to the end of today's session. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for being it. Have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from Coding Decoded. I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question. But till then, goodbye.